Hello, everybody. Um, welcome. I'm Zanya Foco. Just think of Lasagna Coco. Good name for a nutritionist, wouldn't you say? I, I'm so glad you're here to join me for lower your blood pressure with these three foods. That's right. Three foods. Really? One, two, three, three foods. You're going to learn about them tonight that absolutely lower blood pressure. So whether you're here for yourself, whether you're here for a loved one in your family that you want to help get off blood pressure medication or just get your blood pressure under control, or if you just want to never get high blood pressure, hey, that's the camp I'm in, then uh, glad you're here. Yay you for your interest in your own health. And I will tell you, certain foods help raise blood pressure, certain foods help lower our blood pressure. Haha, <laughs> we're going to find out today which those are. And I want you to just imagine right now, uh, with me, pretend like you've got like lots of pressure in your body, lots of pressure, 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 pressure. And you've got your fingers on a valve, a pressure release valve. And I want you to picture being able to crank that and just the pressure release, 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 and you're in control because that's exactly what you're going to learn today, how to decrease pressure within your body so that you can be healthy. I'm totally, we're going to do that. Hey, just to let you know about myself, those of you that are joining me for the first time, I started my career in dietetics, woohoo, nutrition and dietetics over 30 years ago. I started for 10 years at St. Joseph Mercy Hospital in Ann Arbor and the Michigan Heart and Vascular Institute, where I helped people get their cholesterol down, their blood pressure down, their weight down, and also how to manage their diabetes and and I loved that job for 10 years. And then I left that to finish writing my cookbook, Lickety Split Meals. Some of you have this wonderful thing on your kitchen countertop. This has been out over 20 years now, and it's still uh, a great book. Or some of you know me from my newer book, uh, The Eat Real Cookbook, which I co-authored with Chris Sanderson. She is the, um, uh, uh, the founder of eatrealamerica.com, which is our partner recipe site with over a thousand recipes. So however you might know me, or maybe you know me from my TV show on public television. Woohoo! However you know me, I'm so glad you're here today. So I want to begin with a story about 10 years ago, I was in the airport going to a speech. <laughs> Boy, those were the days. Uh, and I was um, in line to buy something and there's the woman in front of me and she was an older woman and she was walking with a cane and I was pretty impressed that she was getting around the airport with her cane. And in front of me, she, she reaches over, she grabs a banana, she puts it down and she goes, oh, I gotta get a banana. My doctor says I have to have a banana every day for my potassium, for my blood pressure. And she's just like, I am so sick of bananas every day. And she gets it, she pays for it. And, and I said to her, I go, excuse me. I said, I can't help it overheard you. And I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist. And you know, yes, your doctor is right. Bananas are high in potassium. They are. But do you know, there's a whole bunch of other fruits and vegetables that are also as high, some are even higher. She goes, Really? And I go, yeah. I said, see those melons over there? There's some watermelon and cubes. You could get that. And that would be, or the cantaloupe. She's like, the cantaloupe or the watermelon? I could get you. I go, yeah, the cantaloupe's even higher than a banana. The watermelon's about the, I mean, they're very good. And she's like, I didn't know that. I said, in kiwi, you could get a couple of kiwi would work too. And a couple oranges, all of them, they're really good. And she was like, I didn't know that. And she said, thank you. You taught me something today. And I said, you're welcome. And you know what? That's what I hope happens today. I hope that you walk away and learn something that you didn't know before. And it's easy and you can do it. And the last thing that's ever going to happen is you're going to walk away saying, Ugh, eating healthy tastes terrible because it doesn't. It tastes really, really delicious and good. You should enjoy everything that you consume. And um, I'm going to be sharing three foods, three foods that you can do. But if you want the quick, I'm going to be flapping my jaws for 45 minutes here. But if you want the quick answer to lower your blood pressure, it's to eat real food. <laughs> That's right. Real food, unprocessed real food. And in America, we like convenience. And sometimes we don't think real food is convenient, but it is. And I'm going to show you today how real food is very convenient. Real food is high in potassium, low in sodium. That woman knew that she needed to eat low sodium. Some of you know that for managing blood pressure, 
salt is important. And you've probably seen some studies where they say, oh, sodium isn't really it. Well, it is it, but it's not the only it. Here's the thing, lowering your sodium won't do that much if you don't also increase potassium. That's where the magic is when you learn how to do both at the same time. And Americans are typically mm, the wrong way. We need to be this way. And that's when you are putting your fingers on the pressure valve to release pressure from your body. Let's learn about potassium, shall we? Because I want to make sure you really know about it. So let's go to our slides and find out. Yes, it's a mineral. Yes, it's an electrolyte. Yes, it's required for good health. Yes, we need quite a bit of potassium each and every day. Check this out. Um, it helps your heartbeat stay regular. It helps your nerves function and your muscles contract. But here's where the real money is. And the real money is right here, that a diet rich in potassium helps offset some of sodium's harmful effects on blood pressure. I know. How does it do that? It does it because potassium increases nitric oxide, N-O. It's like the, the word now, N-O nitric oxide and this lowering of blood pressure, improving the function of your arteries. That's what we really want. And the goal is to increase your potassium and decrease your sodium. So change that ratio. In America, we've got the ratio the wrong way. We've got too much sodium and not enough potassium. And when we eat real food, we change that. So less processed food and more real food. And uh, let's just go to the next slide. And I, as I mentioned to that woman, yes, move over bananas. Uh, we're high in potassium too. Check these things out. Um, kiwi, yes, a couple kiwi, cantaloupe, honeydew, watermelon. Dried apricots are really convenient to carry. Fresh apricots are really good, but I just like the convenience of dried fruits and raisins should be on this list too. Beets and chard and beans and oranges and berries. So many things are either as high or higher, and that's tomato sauce. If you're wondering what that is in the lower right-hand corner, adding three tablespoons of tomatoes paste to a soup or a stew really impacts lycopenes, uh, really good stuff from tomatoes, but it improves potassium. Now I want you to look at this list, just feast your eyes on it. And I wanna ask you, how many of these could you eat in a day? One, two, three, four, five, six. How many could you eat in a day? Because the more of these you eat, it'll fill you up and you won't eat other stuff like some chips and some crackers and things like that that are not doing anything good for you. So downing other foods to up these foods. Some of you think, well, isn't there a lot of calories in some of these foods? not when you come, when you find out what you're not eating, when you're adding these and no, these really are very low in fiber. You actually fill up before you fill out and uh, they're loaded with cancer fighting abilities. So many things. So feast your eyes on that. Now you're like going Zanya. I thought you were just going to talk about three foods and uh, <laughs> these are a whole bunch of them. And I just want, you to know, I'm kind of like the, the mom that has a whole bunch of kids and you say, who's your favorite kid? <laughs> and you can't pick. So I had a really hard time picking the three foods, but I am picking three foods. So you will find out what those are soon. And uh, we're going to put them all together into a couple different great meals. So let's take a look. I want to make sure that you just have a quick understanding of what high blood pressure is, what the reading should be, so that if you know what your numbers are, you know where you fall on this. And it's called the silent killer because you can't feel high blood pressure unless it's all the way in the red zone, then you probably can feel it, but typically you do not feel it. And here's the problem. Doctors say you have high blood pressure and you're like, I don't feel, I feel fine, doc. What's the problem? So there's a lot of denial going on, but it's important for you to know if you have high blood pressure and it's important for you to treat it. It's important for you to get your blood pressure down. Let's take a look. How prevalent is high blood pressure in America? How prevalent is it? Um, it is more, pre is only 10% of people in America have high blood pressure? Does only, you know, 20%, 30%? Guess what? 45%, nearly half of adults have hypertension, that's high blood pressure, or are taking medication for hypertension. So, wow, let's count off. One, two, one, two, one, two. Pretty much every other one of us in America have high blood pressure or taking medication for it. So 
wow, that's, that's not a small amount. That's a lot. And what can we do about that? What are we doing wrong in America? We're doing something wrong in America to have that much hypertension. Now, the next bullet is only about one in four adults, 24% with hypertension, have their condition under control. This is in, this is United States of America. Why don't we, we have medications. <laughs> Why don't we, we can learn how to eat better. We are intelligent, have education available to us. Why are we having such dismal results here? And you think, what's the big deal? So what if I have high blood pressure for a year or two? Or so uh, I feel fine. What's the big deal? And let's just take a look. This is why it's important. Your brain, your heart, stroke, heart attack, heart failure, vision loss, kidney disease, or kidney failure, and sexual dysfunction. Let's just add that in. And also vascular dementia. So our brain, our heart, our whole body, it's all affected by high blood pressure. So I want you to think about this. Every day, every year, every five years, every decade that goes by that you have high blood pressure and you're not treating it, you're not changing your diet, you're not exercising, you're not doing yoga. These are all things that can help bring your blood pressure down. And you know what? When it comes to diet, I'm going to show you the three things, three foods to add, and that's going to really help you out. All right, so we can do this. And there are recommendations. You know how the American Heart Association and the government guidelines, they give us recommendations for sodium. They tell us don't eat too much sodium. So our goal is 2,300 milligrams per day. That's if you have normal blood pressure, 2,300 is a great goal. But if you have high blood pressure, 1,500 milligrams per day is what your goal is. 1,500, that's 500 at breakfast, 500 at lunch, 500 at dinner. Mm, okay, we've got, that's the goal. So now there's recommendations and then there's reality. So let's see what's next. Our reality is 90% of adults consume more than 2,300 milligrams of sodium a day. Uh-huh, 90%. And you want to know what else? 99% of adults consume more than 1,500 milligrams of sodium a day. So we're pretty bad about this following the recommendations thing. So recommendations versus reality eh, doesn't really go, but we can change that. All it takes is learning something. I know you can learn this. I know you can read a few labels. I know you can change up what your choices are at breakfast, lunch, dinner. We looked at all those foods. There's breakfast, lunch, snacks. We can do it. We can absolutely do this and get potassium out, get sodium down. This is sodium, but what about potassium? Take a look at this. So there's recommendations for potassium and there's reality. Our goal is at least 4,700 milligrams of potassium a day. They did just raise it recently. It was 3,500 and they realized how important it is and they want it to be 4,700. So what else? Um, our reality is 98% of adults do not meet this recommendation. <laughs> Are you kidding me? This is the United States of America. We should be able to like be smart. We should be able to get this. What are you talking about? And get this, the American Journal for Clinical Nutrition found that the average potassium intake is around 1,755 milligrams. That's a shortfall of almost 3,000 milligrams. And I'm gonna give you why this happens. It's because Americans average 2.2 servings of fruits and vegetables a day, and we need to have 10 servings. Okay, you probably heard five a day, but the recommendations are seven to 13 or nine to 13 servings of fruits and vegetables a day. I just say 10, it's not nine to 13, let's just say 10. 10 servings of fruits and vegetables a day, and we can do it. And this is not the cause of obesity in America today, <laughs> not too many fruit, don't think it's too much sugar, there's all this water, all this fiber, that is not the cause of obesity today. Refined processed foods are the problem. And we can start making small changes. We can change our taste receptors for salt. Where we used to like things really salty, we can learn to like things less salty. 
we can learn to like things less sweet. We can learn to like things less processed and like things more real, more real food. So let's take a look. What else? Reverse that ratio. So we've got to get sodium down, potassium up. Got that sodium down, potassium up. And we can do that. We can reverse this ratio that we got going on because we're at a two to one. We got double the sodium to the potassium. And that's what our meals look like. And you know it. This is America all the way. We love sandwiches. We love club sandwiches and, you know, two slices of bread. Well, this one has three and there's a lot of sodium in bread. In fact, the American Heart Association lists bread in the top salty six foods that Americans eat. We eat bread and you, you think a slice of bread has 200 milligrams of sodium. Two slices of bread is 400 milligrams of sodium. Remember that, that I said high blood pressure, 1500 milligrams, that's 500 at a meal. So two slices of bread is 400 milligrams just in the bread before you put any turkey or lunch meat on there, which even 99% fat-free lunch meat has 400 milligrams of sodium in it. So now you're at 800 milligrams of sodium for that sandwich. I'm going to show you today some really great ways to trade your bread for something else. And it's just as delicious and it has zero sodium and it's loaded with potassium where bread does not have that much potassium. So it's a great swap out. So I'm gonna share that with you today. Um, sandwiches, uh, pizza with pig fat puddles with the salty meat, processed meat, chicken noodle soup, that crackers and there's no vegetables in that, none whatsoever, no vegetables on that pizza. And that salad is pale iceberg lettuce and processed meat and cheese on there and dressing. All of that, lots of sodium and not a lot of potassium, a little bit in the tomatoes there, a little bit in the carrots, but not much. That's the perfect storm. That's America. That's the standard American diet, S-A-D. And it's sad, 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 sad standard American diet, but we can change that. Our goal is to have our ratio of sodium one to potassium, less sodium, more potassium, get that ratio changed up. And look at that, infusing really fun, real foods, infusing in fresh vegetables, infusing in these foods, a vegetable pizza, and yes, um, looking at a vegetable rich soup. Yes, getting lots of that in there and salad that's got dark greens and lots of really high uh, potassium avocado in that salmon actually has potassium in it too. So there's some really great, you can do this. You can totally do this. And you want to know what? I stand here and can tell you that the food on the right tastes way better than the food on the left. We're just used to the food on the left and it's convenient. And that's what restaurants commonly typically serve, but you can go to different restaurants. In fact, I love talking about how to go to any kind of restaurant and get the right food prepared the right way in the right amounts. And you can learn that too. So restaurant dining out, you can make sure you do not get a meal that will raise your blood pressure. Uh, you can totally do it. So there you go. Do you see the picture? Do you see the difference? We can do this. We absolutely can. Remember pressure valve, <sighs> pressure goes down by making these changes. They really do. All right. Oh, I forgot something. Drum roll. Okay, I need a drum roll. Are you ready for the three foods? Are you ready for the three foods? Little drum roll, please. Little drum rolls, please. You had no idea. Oh, huh, it's a sweet potato. <laughs> sweet potatoes are really, truly an amazing food. And they are not just for Thanksgiving. They are not just with marshmallows and cinnamon. No, no, no. In fact, I don't even like them like that. Um, I never thought I liked sweet potatoes because I thought that was the only way to have them. Sweet potatoes are, yes, higher in potassium than a banana. So you should have the banana and the sweet potato, really, you should have both. And uh, the vast nutrients in this super uh, food can, it helps fight cancer, diabetes, heart disease, macular degeneration, vision loss, obesity, lower. And here's the big deal. I want you to know that white potatoes, white potatoes or red potatoes uh, are amazingly high in potassium too. They're really great. The only problem, they have vitamin C, so have baked potatoes. Baked potatoes, stuff them with some great stuff. You can totally do that. But sweet potatoes are a little better because these do turn into blood sugar fairly quickly, and these do not. Uh, these turn into blood sugar, lower glycemic index. So that's more beneficial, and it has way more beta carotene. So it's got a lot more going for it. So whether you have potatoes, sweet potatoes, but I do want to push you today to really get friendly with these guys and learn 
savory ways to enjoy them instead of thinking it's always cinnamon and marshmallows, that kind of thing. Really varying up the way that you do sweet potatoes because they are standard. So I am going to share some ideas like that. In fact, let me just share some of my favorite ways to do a sweet potato. First of all, you can wrap it in a wet paper towel and microwave it in that microwave for three minutes for this and you just reach in, squish it every so often. Yep, when it's done, it's done. So microwaving is a great way. The other way is roasting them. And I will roast at 400 degrees and I'll just cube up a sweet potato, not even take the skin off. Nope, don't even take the skin off. Cube it and toss it in a little bit of uh, olive oil or avocado oil. Avocado oil is has a higher smoke point for my 400 degree roasting. So it's not a bad idea. And oh, French fries, turning these into the most fabulous looking French fries. Look at that. In fact, let's go over to this camera and you can take a nice closer look at these. Um, and I have convection roast on my oven. So my entire oven, three trays, I can roast all kinds of vegetables. And a lot of you have air fryers, great. An air fryer will work too if you don't have convection roast. But if you have convection roast on your oven, you don't have to buy an air fryer because this is an air fryer. So there's Scotty going in for the sweet potato. I'm telling you, these are, mm, mm. oh yeah, mm -hmm. uh -huh. they're awesome sauce. Now, one of the things I love to do is I love to do a nice big salad like this, beautiful salad. And I use this with my cubed potatoes. I just go ahead and add some sweet potatoes to a salad and a great way to intersperse that into all these are great and nutritional and high in potassium too, but that really helps you get there. So roasting and the way I roast them is you roast them for 15 minutes at 400 degrees and then toss them and then put them in for another 10 to 15 minutes more. And it's just tossed with a little bit of oil and pepper and a little bit of salt. Some of you will go salt, she said salt, but when it's on the outside, it's not that high. It gives you flavor, but it's not a really high amount. Let me explain something at a restaurant. So French fries or a vanilla shake, which one would you think would be higher or taste saltier? Which one would be higher in sodium? The French fries or the shake? You're probably going, it's a trick question, but you would think the French fries, right? Which tastes saltier? I mean, you taste the salt on the French fries, but French fries typically only have a small fry, only have about 125 milligrams of sodium. While the shake is upwards of 300, 250, 300 milligrams of sodium. It just tastes sweet, right? But the sweet and the salt is all part of the recipe. And the French fries, the salt is on the exact outside. When it's mixed throughout, you don't taste it as much. And that's the problem. So to be honest, French fries um, are not the sodium culprit, the part of the salty six. And I know you're like going, really? Oh, great. Did she? You're going to watch this whole webinar. And the only thing you are going to remember is that you can have French fries. <laughs> You can add a little bit of salt to the outside of foods. It's really, <laughs> okay, oh, <hell> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. And uh, the thing is, I want you to know, sodium sneaks in. We all think, well, I don't use the salt shaker. The salt shaker accounts for about a third of the sodium we consume. And what else is in, two thirds is in processed food. And we want to eat real food. So that's the big deal. Same with bread. You don't think that bread is salty. It doesn't taste salty, but 400 milligrams of sodium in two slices is a lot of sodium. And then you add things that are salty on top of it. That's the deal. I'm not here to say no bread because I certainly enjoy bread sometimes, but I certainly have learned to trade out bread instead of it being a staple at breakfast and a staple at lunch and always doing a packed sandwich for lunch. There are so many delicious, great things you can do for lunch instead of that. All right, so I've shown you a couple of my favorite ways to do a sweet potato, microwaving it. Or uh, one more great idea is that you can cook regular potatoes or sweet potatoes in your crock pot. That's right, in your crock pot. All you have to do is load this up. You add no water to it and you just load this up and it will be great. I just want you to know that. You put them in and no water, you just scrub them, put them in there, you bake it and by golly, about, you cook it about two and a half hours on high, three and a half hours on low. And then you have your crock pot set with like a, a potato bar 
to serve the family with, and they can put their toppings on their potatoes. And I will sometimes do regular potatoes and sweet potatoes so that people have a choice. But I also like to just give them sweet potatoes <laughs> so that they can learn to love them because they'll learn to love them if they try them. So there's an idea. All righty, let's move on. Are you ready for a drum roll, please? Drum roll, please, for our food number two. Here we go, and that's cooked red beans. I know people call me the bean queen because I am always showing you how to incorporate beans into your meals. These are amazing in many ways. Yes, they're higher in potassium than a banana and they are loaded with cholesterol sopping fiber, soluble fiber, sponges it right out of our body. So you eat beans, it some sops up cholesterol and then we poop it out. So it's a great heart healthy food. But do you know what? A half a cup of beans is higher than a banana. They are so, it's so low to potassium. So beans are a great thing to add to salads, for instance. Now, cooking beans from scratch saves you money, saves you sodium because you don't have to add salt to them. So, but you don't have to cook things. You can use convenience. You can use canned beans and rinse and drain them. And it'll remove about 20% of the sodium or buy no salt added. You can find it. Eden Foods is my favorite, but you buy no salt added BPA free canned line and organic would be great, but I'm just saying you can use canned beans and rinse and drain them. So here I've already rinsed and drained these and my favorite way, we don't have a salad without beans. That's right. Beans are like our crouton. <laughs> they might not be crunchy, but there are our new crouton. That's the idea. So there you go. There's an idea for you. So I want you to try out the salad. Um, is this looking pretty beautiful? This is looking pretty doggone beautiful, I would say. Now, so beans, and if you want to make a nutritionist happy, after 30 years of in being in practice of a nutritionist, you want to make me really happy? You change the label laws and you start adding the amount of potassium, potassium milligrams because they never used to do that. It used to only be the percent of calcium, the percent of vitamin D and the percent of iron and the percent of potassium based on RDA, but you didn't know the amount of milligrams. Well, now you can compare the potassium to the amount of sodium in that. This has more potassium than it has sodium. And then you're rinsing off some sodium, but you can buy no salt added. But I will tell you that beans are a sponge. It'll just sponge cholesterol right out of your body, but it'll also bring blood pressure right down. Beans are amazing. So they help fight cancer. They fight heart disease. They're, they're really amazing. You don't have to have a lot of beans, a half a cup, a half a cup serving. So don't worry about them making you gassy. Adding small amounts of beans to your diet makes it really doable and easy. Um, I promise. All righty. So next up, um, what is food number three? Food number three, da -da -da -da. drum roll, please. It is avocado. Yes. Avocados are higher in potassium uh, than a banana. And they're a great source of all these great things of which magnesium is one of yay, yay, yay. So magnesium is really awesome. And that's another thing that I'll be taking a deep dive in for those of you that might join me because this is the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more I'll be diving into lowering your blood pressure and we'll talk about magnesium as well and, and how it works. But lutein, beta carotene, all of these are so good and monounsaturated and omega-3 fats really the kind of fat we need to be eating in our diet. Um, and I used to, I've always like said a half avocado for me or a quarter of an avocado if it's really big or depending on what else is at the meal. Um, but typically my husband and I will split a, an avocado, a half for each. Now here's the thing that I had to learn. If you all know this, yay you that you all know this already. So when you go to buy avocados, they're usually kind of pretty hard. There'll be maybe some that are really ripe and they're on sale and they're trying to, you, you know, you want to eat them quickly. So if they're hard still, I store them here, uh, with my apples, bananas, keep all these right here. And the gases from the bananas they help ripen it. And then I check it and go, oh, it's getting ripe, getting ripe. And then when they are ripe and the way you know they're ripe is when you push right here and it's like, oh yeah. So right there, you see that, you know, a little, shh, shh. then, you know, wow, this is, this is ripe and ready. And then if you're like, oh, I got three of them that are ripe and ready. I'm just going to eat one today. Then put the other two in the refrigerator, leave them in the refrigerator. And that will slow it down. So you can preserve that. So let me see if I can find one of my good knives. I was looking for that earlier. Mm, where? I've had other people, oh, hang on, hang on a second. Yes, this is my favorite knife. 
So um, you know how to slice an avocado, right? You know how to just kind of, and this one isn't really as ripe as I'd like it to be, but it's pretty firm. I like them even a little bit riper, but that's, that's pretty beautiful, isn't it? Pretty doggone beautiful. So then to add avocado to your salad, that's, you know, and I do this instead of olive oil on a salad is to just cube up my avocado and then I can, yeah, just go like this and add my avocado like so. It will be the oil to the salad. You don't need olive oil. So now we're really talking. We can add some walnuts to the salad. And then the next thing is gonna be a dressing. And I know what you're saying, put a dressing. So let me tell you my favorite thing. My favorite thing in the whole wide world is a really good high quality balsamic vinegar. This is a brand called Fustini's. Um, Fustini's.com, F-U-S-T-I-N-I-S.com. But I will tell you, I'll straight this balsamic vinegar on the salad, straight. And uh, the avocado for the fat, I might add some walnuts to this. That is an amazing salad. You can even, because you have the sodium so low, usually this adds 400 milligrams of sodium in a lot of dressing, not this, meaning a salad dressing, a bottled salad dressing usually would, but you can add, you have, because you've used that instead of a bottled salad dressing, you can add a little bit of feta cheese, which has some salt to it, but it won't be too much. So that's the balance. That's the balance. So it's not zero sodium. You can have some and it's learning that balance. And so that things don't become tasteless. Um, beefing it up with spices. And I've learned so much. So funny, all the spices that we go through now and the huge gigantic jars of spices. I'll talk about that, that we use to be able to flavor foods. All right. So these are all secrets. Already I've shown you the salad and I've shown you the three foods. And now I want to show you another thing. This is one way to get all three in one meal. Another way to get all three in one meal is to cook up a sweet potato either in the bar. And I will tell you, my friend, Jeff, he served this for Christmas morning brunch. He texts me, guess what I'm serving for Christmas morning brunch? I go, what? He goes, the Southwest stuffed sweet potato. And I'm thinking for Christmas morning brunch, I'm thinking this is a 15 minute weeknight meal, Jeff. And he, I'm like, I'm not thinking it's Christmas morning worthy, but he was like, it was a huge hit. He cooked the sweet potatoes in the crock pot. So it was buffet bar. He sauteed up. This is red onion, black beans, corn, and cumin. Okay. And sauteed that up. And he said, all right, everybody, all you do is you get out a potato. You can, and then you put on the, I would eat half of this, by the way, this is kind of a big amount, but uh, men would use the size. I would have a smaller potato. Like, you know, you, they have small sweet potatoes. Um, it doesn't have to be quite this big, but he said, all you have to do is put this on. Now you can choose if you want to add avocado to this, or if you prefer, and you would like to add salsa to this. Salsa uh, is a, you can find, I'm sorry, you can find ready-made uh, avocado. What is this? Sorry, guacamole. You can make ready-made guacamole and buy it. If you're looking to save time, the ingredients are quite clean. You can do that. Look at various brands available. Some are cleaner than others. And yes, there's a little bit of salt. They've added 125 milligrams of sodium, not a big deal, or go straight with the avocado on top and keep the sodium completely down. So you can absolutely do that. And um, adding, whether you slice them, cube them on top of here, this is a beautiful way to do this. Now, before I add my, I'm going to put these right here. The next thing is salsa. Salsa really brings home the savory flavors in this. And you want to make sure you either home make salsa, or I know we're not going to always home make it. We're going to buy it in a jar, right? So that's about two tablespoons level. In my cupboard, my husband had picked up this salsa. And I was like, oh, okay. And I looked at the label. And I'm like, oh, the sodium is 450 milligrams in two level tablespoons. Like, are you kidding me? 450 milligrams? Scotty, Scotty, Scotty. <laughs> but this one also in our cupboard, organic. And not all organic is low in sodium. It's not. Um, but you look, and this is only 125 milligrams of sodium. Yay. Good job. 
only 145. Yay, Scotty, you had this as well in the cupboard, but this, no, 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 no. And you think about it, and you think the chips were the part, the, the salted tortilla chips. You look and they only have like 130 milligrams of sodium, not that much. You taste it because it's on the outside and you don't always taste it in here. And just think two level tablespoons, you could easily use four tablespoons. That'd be almost a thousand milligrams of sodium. And if you have high blood pressure, you only get 1500 all day. This is how things add up. This is how we in America have it mixed up. So knowing these things, you can change these things. Take the little bit of time. Know that more real food, less processed food. And when you go to a restaurant, ask, look at the nutrition information before you go. There's so many ways that you can do this. Let me just say, all right, I know that people are asking questions and that's great. And I have Debbie as my moderator and she's collecting up the questions, organizing them, and I'll answer those in a few minutes. So keep the questions coming uh, and I will take time to address those. So please do. But let's finish up this beautiful little sweet potato. I'm no Martha Stewart, but I don't know about you, but that's looking pretty fine and dandy, don't you think? And uh, so let's just set that aside. I'm going to tell you how amazing that is in a few minutes. But the next thing I want to show you, that's how to use all three in this one. And this is how you use all three of the great superfoods in this one. Do you feel your blood pressure just coming down as we speak? <laughs> and next thing I want to do is I want you to know that if my doctor ever tells me my blood pressure is high, you can bet I'm going to go home and make a smoothie. Let me just show you the secret to making a smoothie without following a recipe, without following a recipe at all. Check this out. We have all you got to know. You can't have too much frozen fruit in there. It gets all stuck. You want a soft unfrozen fruit and a frozen fruit. Those two together will make it the perfect straw sipping one cup of liquid. So you can use a variety of things for your liquid. One cup of soft fruit, one cup of frozen fruit. And it says one cup of veggie optional. No, no, no. Don't be optional. I am always sneaking in a veggie, always sneaking in a veggie and nobody will ever know. And avocados are great. Now, as you notice down there, you can make orange, green, pink, purple, red. You can make beautiful smoothies. Here's note to self. If you add a whole bunch of different colors, you're gonna get something that looks a little chocolatey brown <laughs> and we don't care. So we don't always make it a brilliant color, but if you do keep them all within the same family, they'll be those beautiful colors. And that's kind of fun. That makes it really fun. You can add one tablespoon of boost of some sort, or, and you can add a sweetener if needed, especially if you're making it for kids and they're used to things being so sweet. But I'm gonna show you today, I'm not gonna uh, use a sweetener. So let's, um, I'm gonna make a, a, my double orange Super high potassium uh, smoothie for you. It starts with orange juice. Orange juice has a lot of potassium. Newsflash, uh-huh, I know. And then next up is to add oranges to it. That's double orange right there. Double orange power. And then I froze these bananas. So I've got my one frozen fruit and I have my soft unfrozen fruit. Here's how I froze the banana. I just stick it in there and I cut it. I don't use a cutting board. I use a butter knife so it doesn't cut the bag. And then I just flatten them all out in there so I don't have to dirty a cutting board. This is so easy. Do this with any of your ripe bananas that you're not gonna eat in time. Just do this and stick them in the freezer. Then I know that's one banana. Uh, so you can put it in three in a big bag or whatever you do. Now this has a secret vegetable of sweet potato. I'm going to tell you a secret. Next time, don't make it so big. Uh, it didn't need to be that much of a sweet potato. I'll tell you that. And then, uh-oh, SpaghettiOs. Sometimes this happens. Sometimes this happens. So just manage it. Manage it and just use, there's still, there's still enough good in there that I could get enough. And I know if the more I add to this, the less orange it'll be. But I wanted to show you the smoothie. Uh, smoothies are a great place to put and I always put an avocado in my green smoothies that I make with kale and they're beautiful green, add uh, kiwi to it, add um, avocado to it. Next is cinnamon and ginger. And I just use the dried at a quarter teaspoon each. And then ladies and gentlemen, we're adding turmeric. You've heard all about turmeric being so anti-inflammatory. It's an amazing food. That's my scoop that goes in there. That lives in there, but I forgot to put it in there that time. But uh, quarter teaspoon of that as well is going to make it even more orange. And then the, the 
the um, super boost is I'm just going to add some almonds. You could add almond milk, but I've got the juice in there and the almonds are going to make almond milk when I grind them up. So it's going to add some protein to this. I've got good, healthy fats in here. So I've got a nice, it's not just carbohydrate, it's carbohydrate, protein, fat. And look at that, how pretty that is. And yes, your Vitamix does a great job to make it really awesome, pretty. So this would be super orange if I didn't put a little avocado in it. Um, but there we go. There's the smoothie. And let me just tell you, when you taste this, it's a beautiful color. And when you taste this, it is like, wow, there's ginger, there's cinnamon. You have no idea there's a sweet potato in it. It just has a wonderful, great flavor. It's got the banana in there, the orange. It's my double orange smoothie. And it's super tasty good. So there you go. I'm going to be sending you the link to the slides so you can print off that page and stick it on your refrigerator so you can do the smoothie formula. Okay. You can do it. All right. So hang on to that. All right. I'm going to be doing a summary here in just a second and tell you all my key points. And, uh, but before I do that, I want to make sure that I share with you that if you've said, I learned a lot tonight, I don't know about you, but did you learn like one thing? Do you learn two things, three things to help you improve your health? To help you lose weight? Yes. To help you, I will tell you it all comes together. And um, let me just say that I am doing a course all four Thursdays in June, all four Thursdays at 7 p.m. the same time. And it's a great time. And even if you can't make it live for each of the live times, I send the recording the next morning so you can watch it at your leisure. But I'm going to be taking this was the tip of the iceberg. If you're serious about being healthy, getting a healthy blood pressure, this course is coming up and I'd love to invite you to join me. It doesn't cost very much. It just doesn't. And I even have a 20% discount to make it even cheaper. The 20% discount code brings it down below hundred dollars for all four nights. You will get access to eatwillamerica.com that gives you over 1000 recipes. Each and every night, will, you will learn three more foods like you learned tonight, three more foods that can lower blood pressure and how to put them together in the most delicious salads, breakfast, lunch, snacks, dinners that will wow your family. It'll make your whole family healthy and help prevent high blood pressure or help lower blood pressure for those who have it and maybe even help you get off medication, maybe even. So I want you to know that. And I also want you to know that I have a money back guarantee. That's right. I'm going to guarantee that if you sign up for the course and the first class, you're like, mm, I'm not looking forward to number two, three, and four, then you can email me and we will refund your money because that is how much I'm confident that you will not be able to wait for class number two, three, and four. <laughs> you will want to stay in. So uh, it's a low risk guarantee, money back guarantee. I'd love to have you join us. All right. So that's the invitation, but to save the 20 percent, you want to make sure you do LBP. Can you go back to the slide LBP 20 and you'll save 20%. And then also I want you to know that um, there, it does expire June 1st. We extended it. It was going to expire, but now it's going to expire June 1st. And so I just want you to know all that. Okay. Interactive. It's also interactive. We won't do it as a webinar. We'll do it as a meeting. So you can have your cameras on. It'll be like, we're right there talking to each other, but we'll do Q and a every night, just like we're going to do Q and a here in a minute, but I wanted to share that with you. Alrighty. The next thing too, is just in review, um, adding 10 servings a day of fruits and vegetables, any kind that we talked about is step number one in getting your blood pressure down. It is. And then really further decrease your sodium potassium with sweet potatoes, regular potatoes too, but push yourself to sweet potatoes, try them savory flavors. I couldn't believe it. Krista Sanderson. Uh, she's the one that talked me into it with eatrealamerica.com and my co-author on the cookbook. She absolutely did. Beans, a great replacement uh, to, and here's the thing, baked potatoes versus sandwiches salads instead of sandwiches. Great way to reduce sodium and increase potassium. Avocado, great, putting all that together. So um, I really enjoyed my time with you. And I think now it's time for some questions. And so Debbie is my moderator. Um, Debbie, what questions do we have? Okay, so the first one is from Denitra. And the question is, is it just 
tomato paste or does fresh tomato also work? Yeah, great question. Fresh tomatoes are amazing. Why did I mention paste? Because they're concentrated and in three tablespoons is like 40 tomatoes. No, I don't know. It's like um, quite a few tomatoes concentrated into the paste and paste uh, the cans. I, uh, when I have leftover canned paste, I'll just freeze the little blobs on wax paper, freeze them, peel them off and stick them in a Ziploc bag. So you can just reach in and grab a blob, a frozen blob. Um, so there's a great way to do it. But paste is just more concentrated. It's, but tomatoes are excellent as well. Thank you for asking. Good question. Next. Okay. I'm going to ask the next two questions together because they both relate to potassium and blood pressure, blood pressure medication. So there might be some overlap. They're different questions, but they're similar. Okay. So Marcy asked, how can someone get rid of their blood pressure medication by eating healthy if the medication they are on limits how much potassium you can have? And Julie asked, if potassium is needed to regulate and lower blood pressure, why do doctors prescribe diuretics to treat high blood pressure? My diuretic has significantly reduced my potassium levels, so it really puzzles me. Help. <laughs> oh, do you know how they always say the medication that you take to treat the problem causes way more problems than treating the problem? than fixing the problem. I mean, have you not seen that? And we are a pill society and doctors just want to take care of you and get you out the door and take care and get out the door. And I don't want to tell anybody to get off of blood pressure medication. I'm not here to, to do that. I, I cannot tell you that, but I can tell you that diet is very beneficial and uh, to getting yourself off of blood pressure medication. I know you can do it, but you've got to change your eating. Here's the thing, the kidneys, Anybody that's having, I mean, you've got to listen to your doctor. If your doctor says your body is not processing potassium well, then, and you have to limit potassium, then you're going to need to limit potassium. But I will say that diet and exercise and losing weight, losing weight might be the first place to start get going. If you happen to have extra weight on board and sometimes just losing 10 pounds will make a difference in your blood pressure. So weight, exercise, yoga, what you eat are all strategies that we can employ. And you're right, taking a medication might help bring blood pressure down, but it causes other things and potassium is critical. So saying to your doctor, would you give me three months without medication to allow me to do this with diet alone? And will my kidneys tolerate potassium then if I'm not on this medication, will that work? So the diuretic gets fluid off your body, but guess what? eating less sodium gets fluid off your body too. So you can do it with diet, um, but they give you a pill, a diuretic to bring sodium off. And for some people, um, they need that extra. So there we go. Um, I also saw a question, I'm looking forward to your next question, but somebody asked if they're recorded. I think I saw that and I just wanna say, if you're thinking about the course, and yes, each one of the classes are recorded, and everybody receives the recording the next morning. All registrants receive the recording the next day. Whether you were there or not, you'll get the recording so you can watch it again, or you can watch the first part if you missed that first part or something like that. I just wanted to answer that really quick. Okay, next, Debbie, what's the next question? Okay, the next question is from Diane who asked, what's the difference between kosher salt and table salt and which kind should you use in cooking? And she also said, love you, Zan. Oh, love that, that's great. We are gonna dive into all the different salts in the course. And I know it seemed like sea salt is going to be much better. Kosher salt is coarser. And if you dust something with kosher salt on the outside, you really gives it sometimes just a really, A, it's decorative, like out of dark chocolate to add just a splash of kosher salt on top because you see it and it's big coarse granules. That honestly doesn't add near as much sodium as this and you wouldn't even know it you know what i'm saying like you just added 20 milligrams of sodium not much but you taste it because it's right on the outside so really doctors always say stop adding salt don't add any salt because it's an easy thing for them to tell you because they're not going to stand there and teach you how to read labels they're not going to do that and yes not adding salt to food and here's something a lot of people add salt to their food before they taste it that's not you, is it? <laughs> if that's you, stop that. 
you are salting food out of habit. And so what we want to do is step back, taste the food, taste the corn without the salt. You'll be amazed at how delicious corn is without salt. We can change your taste buds. You learn to like salt. You were a kid and your mom let you do the salt shaker and you got it all into it and you started doing that. It's a bad habit. So yes, but you can, if you get sodium down on the inside of food, and then you can add a little bit on the outside. So yes, kosher salt is coarse. I do have some and I'll use it occasionally on some recipes, but I wouldn't necessarily say it's better uh, than salt. The other thing is that iodine is an essential nutrient that we need. And unless you're eating a lot of seafood, you're not probably gonna get the iodine you need. Iodine is difficult to get. And even if you don't have a goiter, uh, are a lot of people's thyroid in America is not doing well. And a lot of people have to take a thyroid medication because their thyroid isn't doing well. And I will tell you, iodine is an essential nutrient. So I use iodized salt. I encourage you to use iodized salt. Uh, the sea salt, you can buy iodized sea salt if you like. We'll dive into the differences more thoroughly in the course because we'll have time to do so. But that's my quick answer. I hope that was helpful uh, as a quick answer to get started with. Next question. Next question is from William who says, can we try different types of bread like whole grain? Sure. And you'll notice the sodium content won't necessarily be lower in, low, in whole grain, but try different types of bread. Absolutely. Whole grain is what you're looking for. Not wheat bread, but whole wheat bread. And it can, doesn't have to be wheat. It can be multi-grains, but it's got to be whole grain. Whole is the word you're looking for. And then sodium. Just know that breads use salt. Um, with the yeast. They do make low sodium breads. If you need to be on a low sodium diet and you need to be on 1200 milligrams, then yes, you need to buy a low sodium bread or better yet, make stuffed baked potatoes, do salads, do lettuce wraps. You can do a lot of things to bring down bread and increase veg and increase veg. Veg can replace bread in a lot of places. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Veg it up, veg it up, baby. Did I answer your question? What was it? Yeah. yeah? Okay. Next. <laughs> okay. Well, a new one just popped in, but it relates to that last thing that you were talking about. So I'll ask that one next. It says, does homemade bread have a lot of salt? In the course, I'm going to be teaching you how you can say, gosh, I just made this loaf of bread and it called for a teaspoon of salt. Well, I'm going to show you how to figure out how much sodium that contributes to each slice. So one teaspoon of salt has 2,300 milligrams of sodium. So you've got 2,300 milligrams of sodium in this loaf of bread, homemade bread that you made. Or if you only used a half a teaspoon, then you used a half a teaspoon of salt in that. So that would be half of 2,300. So then say, well, I got 12 slices. So now you can do the math and you can determine how much sodium is in each one. Well, let's just do let's say you got 10 slices and it had a full teaspoon 2300 each slice has 230 milligrams which is typical what commercial breads use is a teaspoon of salt per loaf so the question was does homemade bread have a lot of salt well, i just told you if it if the recipe has a teaspoon it's got a lot of salt <laughs> if you used a half a teaspoon then you halved it and if you used a quarter of a teaspoon you did a quarter and I think your bread will turn out just fine with a quarter teaspoon. Give it a try. These are great questions. You guys are smart. And I have one more left. Okay, good. This one comes from our friend Dawn. And she says, what is the serving size on the roasted sweet potato? Four you ounces? Know oh, four ounces. Yeah. Um, I guess in weighing them, I don't have that memorized, the weight on that. Um, yes, this is a man size. Okay. I tried to mention that a sweet potato like this or this is like my size. And this larger sweet potato is my husband's size potato. So yeah, um, I want, it all depends on what else you're having at the meal. It all depends if you're not having any bread or anything, you know, I might eat all of that if I'm super hungry and I don't have salad to go with it, but I would have salad to go with it. And so I would have half this. So half of a long potato or um, all of this size. How's that, Dawn? I hope that answered your question. I'm not into like weighing everything, but I don't know, four ounces, I'll have to look that up, to be honest. I have to look that up to what the weight is on that. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Let's give Debbie a round of applause for being our moderator. Yay. 
let's give Scotty a round of applause for being our AV guy. Hoo, hoo, hoo. And the next thing is I want to end with one final story. One final story. And that is my friend Dave. At 40, in his 40s, he was diagnosed with high blood pressure and his doctor put him on medication. And his doctor told him, lose weight, exercise, and eat right. And Dave didn't. <laughs> and so he was just too busy for that. So 13 years later, he was 53 and out in his yard working and suffered a major heart attack, major. And he was life flighted to a big hospital. His widow maker, the really important artery in the vein was 100% occluded. They call it the widow maker because if it's 100 occluded, you become your wife's widow, okay? but he did not die. And they were able to unplug it and with through um, angioplasty and he didn't have any heart damage. Usually when that happens, there's heart damage and he had none of it. It was a miracle. He left the hospital in three days and he had renewed interest to eat better, exercise and lose weight because his doctor told him, if you don't, your next heart attack will be your last. And he goes, yeah, I know. So he took one of my courses and he started trying things. And he said, yeah, he goes, sweet potatoes, oh, don't like them, don't like them. So he just stopped listening to me. And I go, wait, 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 Dave, 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 here's your comfort zone. Okay, here's your comfort zone with foods, the foods you currently like, the foods you currently choose, this is your comfort zone. And he goes, yeah. And I go, and here's where the magic happens over here. Do you want the magic? He goes, I want the magic. And you know what magic I'm talking about? He goes, yeah. I go, over here is where the potassium, over here is where the lower sodium is. That's where the magic happens. We gotta change. We're gonna move your comfort zone. And you're gonna find things to be comfortable over there. That's where the magic is. He goes, but I don't like sweet potatoes. I've tried them before. You know, I don't like them, the cinnamon marshmallows, I don't like them. I go, I know, I don't like them that way either. I said, do you like Tex-Mex, Dave? He goes, yeah, I like Tex-Mex. I said, all right, so I want you to try this sweet potato. It's got, you know, you like salsa? He goes, I like salsa. I go, you like corn? I like corn. Okay, so I want you to take these savory flavors, get a little piece of sweet potato, mix it all in there, Dave, and take a bite and tell me what you think. And he had this look on his face. Hmm. Savory flavors. Tex-Mex on a sweet potato. He goes, I love it. But I could eat that. He turns to his wife. He said, you can make that for me anytime. And it's like, ding, ding, ding. That is a big win. But you know what's a really big win? He continued in the course, tried new foods, expanded his horizons, moved over to the comfort zone, lots of new, lots of things, changed up the way he ordered at restaurants, started walking, lost weight, and guess what? His blood pressure is normal, and he's even off medications. That's a big win. And that can be you too. I'd love to get to work with you. I hope I get to see you across from my kitchen island for the course. Uh, don't forget to save 20% with LBP uh, 20 and read about it. See everything, make sure it's gonna work for you. Try the first class, see what you think. But I'd love to have see you there. And um, it's not just in, to lose weight, to lower blood pressure, to keep your blood pressure healthy. I think it'll all come together for you. So thanks so much for joining me tonight. Remember the three foods, sweet potatoes, beans, avocados. You can do this. The choice is yours. Remember, keep it simple and eat real. Thanks so much, everybody.